Hello, and welcome to today's episode of the Open Heavens Daily Devotional. Today, March 3rd, 2024, and the topic of our Open Heavens today is Your Right Hand Man, Part 2. Let us pray. Eternal Rock of Ages, we say thank you for your word this morning. Thank you for the privilege to be alive. Thank you for the grace to be able to listen, listen f- today and hear from you. Father, be exalted in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that your word will do us good in the name of Jesus. That Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that Lord, you will speak to us. And Lord, you will let your word do us more rich and make us better in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. A memory verse is taken from the book of Second Kings chapter three from and verse eleven. Second Kings chapter three verse eleven. And it reads But Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord that we may inquire of the Lord by him? And one of the king of Israel's servants answered and said, Here is Elisha, the son of Shaphat, which poured water on the hands of Elijah. I'll read it again. Second Kings chapter 3 verse 11. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord that we may inquire of the Lord by him? And one of the king of Israel's servants answered and said, Here is Elisha, the son of Shaphat, which poured water on the hands of Elijah. And a Bible passage is taken from the book of 2 Kings chapter 2, from verse 4 to verse 12. And I'll be reading from the New Living Translation version of the Bible. Then Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has told me to go to Jericho. But Elisha replied again, As surely as the Lord lives, and you yourself live, I will never leave you. So they went on together to Jericho. Then the group of prophets from Jericho came to Elisha and asked him, Did you know that the Lord is going to take your master away from today? Of course I know, Elisha answered, but be quiet about it. Then Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has told me to go to the Jordan River. But again, Elisha replied, As surely as the Lord lives, and you yourself live, I will never leave you. So they went on together. Fifty men from the group of prophets also went and watched from a distance as Elijah and Elisha stopped beside the Jordan River. Then Elijah folded his cloak together and struck the water with it. The water divided and two of them went across on dry ground. When they came to the other side, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I can do for you before I am taken away. And Elisha replied, Please, let me inherit a double share of your spirits and become your successor. You have asked a difficult thing, Elijah replied. If you see me when I am taken from you, then you will get your request. But if not, then you won't. As they were walking along and talking, suddenly a chariot of fire appeared drawn by horses of fire it drove between the two men separating them and elijah was carried by a whirlwind into heaven elisha saw it and cried out my father my father i see the chariots and the charioters of israel and as they disappeared from sight elisha tore his clothes in distress may the lord bless the reading of his word in the name of jesus amen so today we are talking about your right hand man part two we started the series yesterday and we mentioned that your right hand man is someone that is close to you that you can depend on that can steady your hands when your hands are weak so let's go to the open heavens as written by our father in the lord god can give you a right hand man and he can also make you another fellow's right hand man None of these two is greater than the other. 
whether God gives you a right hand man or you are someone's right hand man, when you do your assignment as God intends, he rewards you greatly. I had such a man in my life in the late Pa Abiono, popularly known as Papa DGO, that is Deputy General Overseer. When I became General Overseer as a young fellow, I had been in the church for only seven years, and there were people who had been there from the very beginning. Some of who these people were determined that I would fail, and there was nothing I said that they did not criticize. Papa Digio, however, had my back all the time. He was old enough to be my father, but he always stood by me. He fought my battles and always ensured my instructions were carried out to the letter. Regardless of the complaints from those opposing me, in those early days, there was one town in particular where the brethren often quarreled amongst themselves. Once I was informed that they were at it again, and I mentioned it to Papa, he wouldn't let me finish before he would say, I would go and deal with them. He is in heaven now, wearing his crown of many stars, because he was a good right-hand man. In Exodus chapter 25, from verse 12 to verse 15, when God summoned Moses to come into a cloud, only Joshua went with him. When Moses was leaving the world, Joshua, not one of the elders of, or the leader of any of the tribe in Israel, but someone you could call Moses Aaron boy, was the one God chose to continue the work and lead the children of Israel back to the promised land. In 1 Samuel chapter 3 verse 4 to 9, God called Samuel one night, but he thought it was Eli who was calling him. In the middle of the night, when Samuel was supposed to be sleeping, he kept running to answer Eli because he felt Eli needed him. That is a good right hand man. In return, God gave him the ability to become a king maker and a king remover. Beloved, if the Lord has assigned you to be a right hand man to someone, consider it a privilege. Ensure you serve to the best of your capacity and you can rest assured that God will reward you tremendously. Hallelujah. So in our open heavens today, our Father in the Lord yesterday admonished us to ask God to show us a right hand man. So yesterday we spoke about having a right hand man. But today, our Father in the Lord is talking to us about being a right hand man. That is, if God has called you to be a right hand man to someone, He is encouraging us to do the job very well. In this scripture that we read in the book of 2 Kings, chapter 2, from verse 4 to 12, we spoke about Elisha and Elijah. Elisha was called by Elisha when God said he should go and anoint three people. And Elisha was one of those people that God said Elijah should anoint. And Elisha was supposed to take over from Elisha. And it was not an automatic place or an automatic ticket. That because God has said, oh, you will take over, you just take over automatically. No. Elisha saw the need to be Elijah's right hand man. So that he can learn and so that he can be there to help Elijah on his own path to fulfill his own purpose and by standing with Elijah, Elisha learned and Elisha was able to fit into the shoes of Elijah and even according to the Bible, Elisha did times two of the miracles that Elijah performed. So our Father and the Lord is encouraging us today that being a right hand man to somebody does not mean you are lesser, does not mean you are weaker neither does it mean that you don't have sense like people will say many times when people see someone that is standing by another person they believe that it's because you are not wise that is why you are deaf the person speaks to you anyhow sometimes not all cases the person does not really really you feel as if the person does not regard you and all those things and people start telling you ah you are not wise why will you be serving this person? Why will you stay with this person? Why would you do this? 
But if God has called you to stay in that position, then stay in that position and allow God to reward you. Don't listen to what people will say. Because many times, when God puts us in those positions, there are things He wants us to learn. And that is something that our generation is lacking this day. We want to always get to that position of authority, but we do not want to go through the process. We don't want to learn. We don't want to subject ourselves to the process of learning. So today, I want to also encourage us that if you are a right-hand man to someone, please do it well. Don't use it as an opportunity to snatch that person's position. Don't use it as an opportunity to weaken that person. Don't use it as an opportunity to bring the other fellow down. Because God has called you to that position. If you do it very well, He is the one that rewards every of the things that we do. If you are a right-hand man, God is the one that will reward you. He is the one that knows what He wants to do through you or the purpose he wants to fulfill through you. So he will reward you in due course. Don't be don't be d- disappointed. Don't be weakened by what people will say. Like the people try to tell Elijah, Elisha, don't you know your master is going? Why are you following him everywhere? Why are you doing this? But Elisha was focused on the goal. He knew what he wanted. And it, God helped him to stay with Elijah to the very end and receive this blessing. The same thing for Samuel. Samuel was a boy who was not grumbling. Ah, oh, this Eli, Eli. Why did he call me the the first time? And he said he did not call me. And why the second time he could have decided to sleep and say, well, if when this man is ready, he will come and meet me in my room. But Samuel was willing to keep running to the prophets, keep running the first time, the second time, Then the third time, Eli told him, this is what you should do the next time. If Eli had not told him, Samuel may never have been able to identify that it was God that was speaking to him. So that is one of the benefits. You receive some things that you don't know, some benefit from being somebody's right-hand man. Because God is the orchestrator of all things. So, a key point for today. If God makes you someone's right hand man, it is an assignment of great importance and you must treat it as such. So, our Father in the Lord is telling us again, treat the position of being a right hand man as an assignment that is very important to God. And the Bible in one year is taken from Deuteronomy chapter 33 to verse 34, and Deuteronomy 33 to chapter 34. So, we are taking those two chapters. And I am if Jesus loves me, this I know. Jesus loves me, this I know. I pray that the Lord will help us and will open our eyes to see a right hand man. And he will also give us the grace to be a good right hand man as long as he wants us to be. The Lord will strengthen us and he will help us to also stand as a right hand man that is faithful even to the very end in the name of Jesus. Thank you for listening to today's episode. Don't forget to like, share, and comment. Subscribe to this channel. And don't forget that God is the only one that loves you more than any other person. Give your life to Jesus today if you have not given your life to Jesus. And I pray that the Lord will bless our day today in the name of Jesus. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.